All right. So now we are doing uh, this past paper, which is September 2018, Strategic Business Reporting International. And this is the exam of September attempt, September 2018. And according to the plan, we are going to the question number one, which is from the consolidation and the other standards as well. But mainly we are supposed to do the consolidation today. So this is the question number one from the section A, and let's go to the requirement. So the requirement number A is draft an explanatory note to the directors of the banana discussing the following, how goodwill should have been calculated on the acquisition of grapes and show how the accounting entry, which is required to amend the financial director's error. Now that is why I was concentrating on the double entries in every standard, in every topic I was telling you the double entries, even in the practice session, even in the last practice session, I told you the double entry of each and every situation because the SBR exam requires that. So it's, it particularly says, show the accounting entry. When, when we say accounting entries, so that means the double entry which is the journal entries, which is required to amend the financial director's error. So from the requirement, it is quite visible that the goodwill they have calculated is not correct. It is not according to the standard working of the goodwill. And they have made an error in the calculation of the goodwill. We need to tell them how the goodwill is calculated and then what adjustment they need to make. Uh, th there's no need to explain it because once you write the double entry, it will give the self-explanation of the adjustment of the error. So we know the formula of the goodwill. Hope you have revised the consolidation. So the formula of the goodwill is, so goodwill is simply calculated as, we have already done it. So first we take the consideration in the consideration, we know there are certain elements. We have the cash, deferred consideration, loan notes, contingent consideration, shared exchange. So we need to see what we have in the question. So first we have the considerations. And then within the consideration, <clears throat> we add the, the non-controlling interest. The non-controlling interest. And we know there, there are two methods. So the first method is the fair value method in which either the fair value is given or you can calculate the fair value based on the share price. Or it can be the second method, which is the uh, proportion of the net assets method. So we need to see in the question what method it is. Either it is the fair value method or the proportion of the net assets method. Okay, then consideration and add the non-controlling interest. And then when you add the non-controlling interest, then you are going to discuss, uh, so, uh, then you're going to deduct the net assets of subsidiary at acquisition. So we need to take the net assets of subsidiary at acquisition. And then we have the goodwill on acquisition. Okay, once we have calculated the goodwill and acquisition, then we will be deducting the impairment. If there is any impairment. And then we have the goodwill, which is going to be presented in the consolidated statement of the financial position. So this is this is the formula of the goodwill. All right, so the first method is how the goodwill is calculated. So we have written the formula and we'll read the question. Uh, the first, this is the first requirement. The second requirement says why equity accounting? Now we know that when we say equity accounting, this is relevant to the accounting for associates, which is done according to IAS 28. And again, if you have done the consolidation, we know the equity accounting means 
that one figure goes to the consolidated statement of financial position, which is the consideration plus share of post-acquisition profit, which is the parent share of the post-acquisition profit minus impairment, minus dividends, minus unrealized profit. And one figure goes to the consolidated statement of profit and loss, which is the parent share of the post-acquisition profit minus any impairment. So this is the calculation. Equity accounting was the appropriate treatment for strawberry in the consolidated financial statements up to the date of its disposal, showing the carrying amount of the investment in strawberry just prior to the disposal. So they're asking carrying, carrying amount. When, when we say carrying amount, that means the figure relevant to the consolidated statement of the financial position. Okay, then we have uh, how the gain or loss on disposal of the strawberry should have been recorded in the consolidated financial statements and how the investment in strawberry should be accounted for as uh, after the part disposal. Okay, this is the quite simple question. When it says the gain or loss, we again, we know the formula of it. So we take the consideration, we add the fair value of the interest retained. Let me just write this thing as well. Okay, I'll write the associate thing as well. Associate the carrying amount in the consolidated statement of the financial position. It starts with the uh, consideration, which is transferred. And then you add the parents share of associates post acquisition profit and mainly you deduct the impairment if any there are some other things as well like for example dividends and realized profit but at sbr level i do not expect those things but again if there are any you can surely write that so then we have <clears throat> the figure that should be represented in the consolidated statement of the financial position and then they ask regarding the gain or loss in disposal. So it is simply, you know, you take the concentration received and then you add the fair value of the interest retained, like if they have retained any interest, if they have not disposed the complete one, the fair value of the interest retained And then you deduct simply the carrying amount. So the difference is the gain or loss. All right, <clears throat> so these are the first three requirements. Let's do the A first and then we'll move to the B. So in the first one, we need to comment on the goodwill. In the second one, we need to comment why the equity accounting was the appropriate treatment. That means you need to second them why they were correct in that situation. And then you need to calculate the carrying value prior to disposal, that means before the disposal. And in the third one, you need to calculate when they have disposed the associates, you need to calculate the gain and loss on disposal. And then they say, after disposal, how the investment in strawberry should be accounted for after the past disposal. Part disposal means they have disposed some of the shares. Maybe now they have lost the significant inference. Now, how that should be recorded in the uh, financial statements. So Banana is the parent of a listed group of companies, which has a year end of 30 June 2007. It is very important to know the dates when it comes to consolidation. So Banana, has made a number of acquisitions and disposals of investments during the current financial year. And the directors required advice as to correct accounting treatment of these acquisitions disposals. So SPR is all about telling the accounting treatments of each and every situation. The first one is the acquisition of grape uh, regarding which we need to comment on <clears throat> the goodwill. 
On 1st January 2 X7, Banana acquired 80% of the equity interest in Grape. So it's 80% acquisition, which gives them the control. The following is a summary of Grape's equi equity at the acquisition date. So the equity share capital, $1 each is 20 million. So the total shares are 20 million and they have acquired 80%. So that means they've acquired 16 million. Uh, so the 20 million and the other 20% is going to be 4 million, which is known as the non-controlling interest. Then they have the retained earning at acquisition of 42 million. Then they have the other components of equity at 8 million. The total retained earnings at acquisition, uh, sorry, net assets at acquisition is 70 million. The purchase consideration, now we know uh, how to calculate the goodwill. Just go back to the formula. Going back to the formula, okay, here. So we take the consideration. It says the purchase consideration comprised 10 million of the bananas share, which had a nominal value of dollar one each and a market price of 6.20 each. So the purchase consideration comprised. So that means 10 million of the banana shares. So they are giving the shares in exchange. So in the consideration, I told you we may have cash, loan notes, contingent consideration, deferred consideration. And here we have the share exchange. So the share exchange, it says 10 million shares. Now you need to multiply it by the parent share price. We have already done that when we were doing the consolidation. So you simply multiply by the parent share price, which is 6.80. So it is going to give you 68,000. Okay, we are taking in million, so yes. If you're taking in triple zero, then you can write 68,000 in triple zero above. If you're taking in dollar million, so you can just write 68 over here. Okay, then we have, <clears throat> additionally, the cash of 18 million was due to be paid on 1st January 20X9, that means after how many years? After two years. If the net profit after tax of grape grew by 5% in each of the two years following acquisition. So they're going to pay in the future, but there is a condition attached with that. So that means it's the contingent consideration. And we know the standard says the contingent consideration should be recorded irrespective of the conditions being met. The present value of the total contingent consideration was 16 million. They've already calculated it because obviously it is a future value. So you need the present value to record it. And it was felt that there was a 25% chance of profit target being met. Now, this is the relevant thing over here, the standard allows you that, for example, if you have any contingent consideration, you must record it irrespective of the conditions being met, but obviously you can consider the probability of the situation. So it says 16 million, 16 million is the present value, then you can take 25% of that as a contingent consideration. So 16 into 25%, gives you 4 million. So 4 million is the amount that should have been recorded as a contingent consideration. That means the double entry would be debit investment and credit liability because it's a liability. And every year you have to unwind that. But obviously they're asking us regarding the goodwill which is calculated on acquisition. So there's no calculation required for the unwinding, but yes, if they ask you in any other question, you should know that. But initially we recorded as present value. Uh, that means debit investment, it becomes part of the investment and credit liability because it's your liability. And every year you have to unwind it so that it reaches the total figure, which it's supposed to be. At acquisition, the only adjustment required to the identifiable net as we know the fair value adjustment was for land which had a fair value of 5 million higher than its carrying amount. This is the upward fair value adjustment. This is not included within the 70 million. So that means you need to add this over here because obviously 
underneath the other components of equity, we do the fair value adjustments. So it's upward. So we need to add 70 plus five that will make it 75. So the fair value of the net assets, the net assets of subsidiary at acquisition is going to be 75, which is 70 plus five. You can show that over here, 70 plus five. Obviously you will be appearing in the computer-based exam. So you have the spreadsheet over there. You can use the spreadsheet to do these calculations. All right. <clears throat> uh, so Goodwill, <clears throat> they have calculated. We know that, but it's the wrong calculation. So what they have done, let's see. The goodwill for the consolidated financial statement had been incorrectly calculated. They have taken only the share exchange so that we cannot see any contingent consideration which is missing. So what we need to do is we take the contingent consideration as well because the standard says it should be recorded irrespective of the condition being met. So you take, uh, yes, 16 million, which is the present value and the probability is 25% chances. So it gives you 4 million. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> then we have adjusted the net assets. Okay, net asset acquisition is 70. We have taken it 75 and then the goodwill. So the NCI at acquisition is the 70 million into 20 percent which looks like the proportionate of net assets method. even if it is proportionate of net assets method it's the wrong calculation because it should be 75 into 20 percent but let's see what what the question has to say regarding this the financial director did not take into account the contingent cash since it was not probable that it would be, would be paid. So it's, it's the wrong calculation they have done because it should be recorded irrespective of the conditions being met. Additionally, he measured the non-controlling interest using the proportional method of the net assets. Okay, which is a good, which is fine. The standard allows you <clears throat> that you can choose between the method. Despite the group have a published policy to measure the non-controlling interest at a favor. Now this is <clears throat> the inconsistency. When the group is using the fair value method, then they should use it as well. So <clears throat> it should be the fair value method. Now we know how to calculate the NCI at fair value. Either it is going to be given in the exam or we have the share price being given. The share price of the grape at, at acquisition was 4.25 <clears throat> and should be used uh, to value the non-controlling interest. Now we know that the total shares are 20 million. We've already calculated the NCI portion. We know that. <clears throat> yes, 20 to 20%, 20 that means four. <clears throat> Sorry. So the total shares are 20 million. Multiply by 20% gives you four. And multiply by the share price, which is given in the question here, 4.25. So multiply by 4.25. So four into 4.25 gives you 17, which is going to be added. <clears throat> so now we can calculate the goodwill and acquisition because there is no impairment in the question. So we have 68 plus four plus 17 minus 75, it gives you the goodwill of 14. So the goodwill on acquisition is 14. Now we have already calculated the correct goodwill, which was the requirement. How goodwill should have been calculated? Now you're, you're going to start with, with the description and explanation that, okay, the goodwill is calculated as per IFRS3 business combinations, and the goodwill is calculated as, so first of all, you're going to write a few lines, and then you need to show the calculation. Don't just start directly with the calculation because you need to write the introductory lines that <clears throat> in the calculation of the goodwill it requires fair value adjustments and so many things. You need to write that and then show the calculations. Okay, now it, in the second requirement it says, 
show the accounting entry which is required to amend the financial director's error. Now, what are the errors? The errors are that they have not recorded uh, the fair value adjustments. They have recorded the goodwill at 12 and the correct value of the goodwill is 14. So you need to adjust the goodwill first, the deb debit goodwill because they have recorded it at 12 and the original value is 14. So 12 has already been recorded. So you need to just write two further debit goodwill too. Then they have not recorded the fair value adjustment of the land. So debit fair value of land, which is going to be 5 million. And then they recorded the non-controlling interest. Non-controlling interest has a credit nature because it is recorded between the equity and the liabilities. So they have recorded the non-controlling interest at 14. Now, what is the correct value of the non-controlling interest? The correct value of the non-controlling interest is 17. So that means you need to increase it by three. So credit non-controlling interest. The, they recorded it at 14 and the correct value is 17. So the difference is three, 17 minus 14. <clears throat> and this is 14 minus 12. And then they did not record the contingent consideration as a liability. So, you know, the debit side is seven, the credit side is three. So the remainder is four, which is the credit entry of consideration payable, contingent consideration payable at four million. So this is the correct entry, uh, the adjustment entry they need to record to correct the errors. <clears throat> okay, now we are moving towards the acquisition and subsequent disposal of the strawberry. So Banana had purchased 40% equity interest in strawberry for 18 million a number of years ago. So the consideration was 18 million. Now we know the formula because they have asked us to calculate the carrying amount, the carrying amount, the carrying amount of what? The carrying amount of the associate in the consolidated statement of the financial position. So we know the consideration they have already given us, which is 18 million. Okay, so it says when the fair value of the identifiable net assets was 44 million. So this is at acquisition. Since acquisition, Banana had a right to appoint one of the five directors on the board of the strawberry. Now the requirement is that why equity accounting was the appropriate treatment. Now, according to IS 28, if the entity has acquired 20% or more shares, then it gives them the significant influence. The significant influence is all about the participation in the financial and operating policies of an organization. So they were having the right to appoint one of the five directors. So that means they were having the participation in the board. So that is why it was the correct treatment to record the associate, both in terms of the percentage, because they have the 40% acquisition, which is more than 20%, 20% or more. And the second thing is the participation in the board. So both of these evidences suggest that they were doing the correct accounting by uh, doing the equity accounting. <clears throat> the investment has always been equity accounted for in the consolidated financial statements of Banana. <clears throat> Banana disposed of 75% of its 40% investment. 75% of 40% they have disposed. That means they still have the 25% of 40%. For 19 million, now, okay, we have another figure. For the gain and loss, which is <clears throat> the consideration received, which is 19 million. All right. <clears throat> 19 million, when the fair value of the identifiable net assets of strawberry were 50 million. Now it has grown up. Initially at acquisition, it was 44 million. Now it has grown to 50 million. So that means this is the post acquisition profit. The difference between this 44 and 50. 
is the post acquisition. So we have the this thing, the parent share of the post acquisition profit. So what is the post acquisition profit? <clears throat> is 50 minus 44 multiply by 40%, which is the parent share of the post acquisition profit. So 50 minus 44 multiply by 0. 0.4. It gives you <clears throat> 2.4. The fair value of the remaining 10% equity interest was 4.5 million at disposal, but only 4 million at 30th June 2007, which is at the reporting date. Okay, now we have another figure, <clears throat> the fair value of the interest retained for the gain and loss purpose, fair value of the interest retained is 4.5 million. Okay, now we have the carrying amount as well. There's no impairment. So 18 plus 2.4 is 20.4. This is the carrying amount before disposal. And we can put it here as well. So once we put it here, we get the gain or loss. So it's 19 million, which is the consideration. Remaining interest value is 4.5 million minus the carrying value of whole thing, which is 3.1. So the gain on disposal, is the gain on disposal of 3.1 million. The gain is 3.1 million and the carrying amount is 20.4 million. <clears throat> Banana has recorded a loss in reserves of 14 million, calculated as a difference between the price paid of 18 and the fair value of 4 million. Now, no, this is the incorrect treatment. The gain is 3.1 million that should have been recorded in the, pro, in the um, profit or loss. Instead, they have recorded the loss of 14 million. So they need to reverse it because they need to record the gain of 3.1 million instead of the loss of 4, uh, 14 million. Banana has stated that they have no intention to sell their remaining shares. That means when they have no intention to sell the remaining share, they will keep it. They will keep it for long, long term, no intention to sell, strategic intent. And they wish to carry classified remaining 10% as the fair value for the comprehensive income. Now that means <clears throat> that means the remaining interest was. 4.5 million at the date of disposal, but at reporting date, it's fair value is 4 million. So there should be a loss on investments. So debit other comprehensive income, which is the difference between four and 4.5, which is 0.5 and credit investments, which is the financial asset. This is the financial asset as per IFRS 9. Now you also need to tell them that the gain of 3.1 million should be recorded instead the loss of 14 million, which is the incorrect treatment.